Okay, well, thank you all for coming here at 8 o'clock in the morning. I realize that travel day yesterday and all the stuff that you did on the conference kept you going. Um, we'll try to keep this on, on pace so I don't, uh, don't slow you down for anything. We may or may not go the full two hours. This is Kelly Cavanay, by the way. She's from Ocean Springs, and she's going to be my assistant today. She just didn't realize that. The session we're going to talk about is how to create your own SMS text messaging system. How many of your schools have a text messaging system if, if an emergency happens or something? Northwest Rankin, where are you from, Tracy? Gulfport, okay, but that's, that's school-wide. Okay, what I'm gonna show you is a site called CELI, C-E-L dot L-Y, but first I wanna take you through a little bit. How many of you have Twitter accounts or Facebook accounts? Okay, we'll be zipping through this then. We're gonna introduce you to CELI and Twitter, how they both can work safely and in conjunction with each other and how they can be tools for your administrators and for you as teachers in the classroom. The terms we're not going to deal with too much, hashtags you're familiar with. Selly account, a Selly account is your user account like your Twitter account. The difference in the account and the cell, you can have as many cells as you need under the one account. In Twitter, you have one account per email address. So it kind of kind of bothers you. How many of you are teachers and coaches? Anybody here? A teacher and a coach? A teacher and a band director? Okay. Okay, so you have needs for two different type things. One for the general population, one for that specific population. With Twitter, you'd have to have two different accounts to do that. Okay, so this, this is where Selly is going to help you. The receptors... This is going to tie both Selly and Twitter together because you can tweet out something to that one specific group and also send it out to a specific cell without having to go redo it. We know what Twitter is, so we don't have to. I go through all this because, there, believe it or not, there's some people who still don't use Twitter. Okay? So I have to just go through that. Why is it needed? Now, how many of you actually use this, use Twitter as a real time search engine? One? Y'all know you could do that, right? Most of the time you go to Google, bring back a page, and the first four or five items are paid for. Doesn't mean that they're what you're looking for, but who paid for those keywords. Then they base it off the Google algorithm, okay? With Twitter, you go in and do a search for MS Mecca 13, and any tweet that has MS Mecca 13 in it is gonna show up here. So if you're doing something for your specific area of study, you can go in and get a real-time search engine. Yesterday, I'm sure that when they ended the holdout, the, hold, the, the, the hostage situation in Alabama, I imagine that that Twitter feed and hashtag was spinning like an odometer doing 200 miles an hour with all the updates from people. And you can get first-hand views as well. Right. Actually, not, right, that's... <laughs> hey, if you go to the, to, to the supposed news sites. I remember when Hurricane Sandy came through and they were reporting that the New York Stock Exchange had five feet of water on the floor and it was going to be down for three months. Uh -huh. And they actually interviewed a person who was a reporter at the Stock Exchange at one point. And about 10 minutes later, the Stock, the, the stock Exchange came on and said, we're not underwater. Somebody's just making that stuff up. They got to sell toothpaste. Uh -huh. So you're right. You can find information that may or may not be accurate, but you have to determine what you're doing. Now, Selly is a platform and tools that can enhance your communication, okay? You can create multiple networks. We got the air conditioner coming, I promise. <laughs> we, we talked about when we came in. Um, you can have instant uh, multiple sessions that connect your school with your teachers, with your parents, and with your kids, okay? What's going to be good about it is that the people opt in. You don't automatically put them in. They have to opt in to the system. They can opt out of the system. As you'll find out in a minute, it's purely anonymous. You don't know who is in, who is not in. At any time, you can ask questions. We'll, we'll go through this 
and I'll be glad to ask and answer them. Sally is instant real-time alert messaging. You can hook it to a Twitter feed, whether the person has Twitter or not. When we had the bad weather, snowy weather in Starkville a couple of weeks ago, there are a lot of people that don't have Twitter. How, okay, the ones of you who have Twitter, have you looked at your, at your Twitter, at your feed, in the last 10 minutes? How many messages do you think have come through? Probably 8 or 10, 20, who knows? Depends on what you're following. With Twitter, you can't keep up with that during the day. What happens if you, if you get a message on your, on your cell phone? You look at it. So that's the good thing about this. It's disseminated to parents and your local constituents. You can make a cell and say, your parents can come look at this. Uh, the school board members can come look at this. Uh, if you've got a peer committee, they can come look at this. And this works when your internet connections go down because you simply text something from your cell phone. The differences between the text messaging and, and Twitter, Twitter is timeline based. It does not have that time sensitivity that you need. Like I said, if you're here from eight to five today, and you're not checking your Twitter every minute, you're gonna miss something. I could actually prove that by going in and tweeting out something on my Twitter account and see if anybody takes me up on that free lunch I'm offering today. See, I bet all y'all will. <laughs> Kelly doesn't realize it's in with the ticket. Okay, it's also, with Twitter, you have to have a smartphone or a web interface. With Selly, it's a text message, so you can get one of those little flip phones, and it works fine. It is time sensitive because you're not getting things, your phone's not buzzing off the hook. It's just that one time you send out that message, that emergency message you need to send out, or that timely information saying, remember, we got nine weeks test starting tomorrow. Remember that uh, we got a half day for teachers to work today, and things like that. It's accessible by any cell phone, not just a smartphone, but any cell phone, or by a web interface, and it can import and send twi Twitter feeds out to everybody else. Okay, who can use Selly? Anybody. Administrators, teachers, coaches, students can even use Selly. Parents and news organizations. Imagine if you had something that when you wanted to announce you're going to a conference or you've got some students that won a competition. Instead of trying to send an email to somebody or trying to find the right Twitter account, if you just simply send out this text message that said, we had a student won a national competition. If you'd like to you know, interview them, get in touch with me. So you can do that. The teachers, administrators, and parents, everybody has a cell phone. A lot of people may or may not have actual internet connectivity at home. That's what we hear all the time when we're trying to get people to do things. You know, well, our students can't do our assignments at home because they may not have internet. Well. They got a cell phone so you can send stuff to the, to the parents. Also, a lot of times, if I were to send this piece of paper home with somebody, if they had sent it home with me when I was in school, it got about right there and it was gone. And my parents never saw it. And if it required a signature, I learned how to put that on there too. So that's, that's the good thing about it. Again, it's opt-in or opt-out. The educational uses for Selly, school information, emergency information, alerts, schedule change information, and trip information, okay? So anything that you need to get out to your students or to your parents, you put it out here. The good thing about Selly is it's gonna be transparent. Anybody can go look at the information at any time. Um, IT, this does not use a school network. It does not create security breaches, okay? So your IT people are gonna love this. Let's see. Let's go real quick through the different, there's two different ways you can use Selly, and then we're gonna actually get into the hands-on because y'all didn't come here to sit there and hold your hands and be bored all day. I know this. The first way is if you have one school account where one person monitors every text message that goes out. How many of you have to go to one particular location to make a phone call? to talk to parents or students, or have to have something go through an administrator. 
This method works. The second method is each individual person has their cell account and each person then can have things under it. The first one, you, the school creates the account, you're going to see it in a minute. Faculty staff requests that they get a specific cell created for them. So you'd have one account at Ocean Springs and then Kelly Cavanaugh would say, I would like a separate cell under there that's Kelly Cavanaugh's class, okay? It is linked to their Twitter account and a specific hashtag. It's just like when you go and use a debit card. It's got your bank account number on it, but unless you've got your specific pin, anybody can have it. It won't work unless they've got that. That's what the hashtag does. You'll then send specific messages from a specified Twitter account or by your system administrator. The system administrator can send anything they want and you don't have to worry about it. Can the, can the teacher send it through the seller? Yes, the teacher can send it. You're going to have to have a Twitter account or a Facebook account to set up your Selly account. Once you have that, you do not have to go through Twitter. There is a, a web interface that you can use. Now, is that just for, just for a teacher account or one main school account? Either. Either or. The teach, the, 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 what you've got with the school account is you've got that one person at the hub of it controlling what anybody else what anybody else sees and sends and they monitor that information if you don't have to have that the individual cell account is is fine for you do not have you have to have the twitter or the facebook you have to have a social media account to create that celly account but then once you do that you don't have to use you can use the web interface and enter the stuff yourself the, the things that i do and i'll show you a couple of my cells in a minute when there's bad weather, when there are emergency situations, as you said, everybody is tweeting out everything and you may or may not be getting good information. I like to use Twitter because I'll link to official sources, Mississippi Emergency Management, the governor's office, MDOT, whatever, to get the information out from an official source. Then they can't come back and say, well, Craig said, no, Craig didn't say anything. This is Governor Phil Bryant's Twitter account. If he gets hacked, that's not my fault. You know, I, I, but that's, that's, that's the way you do it, and that's why I like to use the Twitter account. It's got several different things. You can do curated chat, open chat, or what I like to do is just alert only. I don't want to chat. I don't want to have a conversation with you. I want to give you information, and that's what this is for, in my perspective, is to give out information, not to have a chat. The hashtags, actually right here, this is where you actually would have the administrative they would look for a specific Twitter account with a specific hashtag. If it doesn't have that, it ignores it. So your administrator can have 50 different teachers sending stuff in, but unless it has that teacher's Twitter account and a specific hashtag, the guy doesn't have to look at a thing. This is the school where you've got the school right here in the center. These are the individual users that send everything right here. And then from there, it gets sent out. Okay? And I'm zipping through this because I don't want to take up too much of your time on this. Um, the individual. Again, we use alert only. The individual person sends it from right here and they can get stuff in from other accounts and send stuff out to other accounts. All from that individual account. Um, Portland, Oregon City Schools, Lowell, New, uh, Lowell, Indiana, New Milford, New Jersey. All these schools use, uh, use Selly, and it's absolutely free. You'll find out in just a minute how, how easy it is to do it. And with that, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to zip out of, out of the presentation because, like I said, 15 minutes and you're ready to go to work. Okay, Selly. This is Selly right here. Again, for those who came in, if you want to, you can go to craigstechblog.wordpress.com and you can find the links to this. Just go to craigstechblog.wordpress.com 
and then go to my presentations and you'll see the Mecca in session one and session two and session three. With Selly, as you can see, I've got multiple cells in my account. I've got one for MDOT. This is the local start for weather. I had somebody say, well, the weather usually comes from the west to the east, so can we put Webster County in there so we can know? That's just my alarm, let me know, don't talk too loud. But since the weather comes from west to east most of the time, it would help if we knew what was coming from Webster County. Plus, I've got relatives living in Webster County. I'd like to know what their weather is. So we did that. You can see I've got just a bunch of different individual cells. I've got one called presentations, which is when I'm doing presentations, when I'm here at Mecca. If I've got some free time, I can send out a message that says, hey, you know, I'm free from 1030 to 1145 if anybody needs to come have a, a session on some of these tools. I don't have to worry about are you looking at Twitter? I don't have to worry about trying to find you or sending you an email. I send this out. If you're, if you're attached to this cell, you get the message. How does it work? Very simple. I can either go to the specific cells, and here's my test cell. And if I want to, I can type a message right here. I can have it linked in via receptor from whomever. I could actually put in the MS Mecca 13 hashtag and then anything that comes across with MS Mecca 13 would be texted out to everybody. If I want to send a message, I'll tell you what, let me back out to a different cell here. If you want to see this in action and you've got a cell phone, Pull it out, send a text to 23559, and in the middle of the text put presentations. I'm going to give you all just a couple of minutes to, to do that. As you can see right now, I've only got one, the, the number is 23559, and that's going to be an easy number to remember because no matter what account you've got, you will always have it 23559 and in the body put presentations. Okay? And as people start signing up, we already got similar stuff that's going to be the uh, it says IA text. Yeah, you want to do Z. If, you, if you're already using Selly, it will remember who you are. But as you can see, I've got four new people. And I have no clue who you are. I can't, no, that, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. I cannot send you a private message. Because it may be to her instead of to you. You can't send me a message at all because it's alert only. Now when I get ready to send out the message, just presentations. Okay, now there's my, there's my message. And I just sent that out. In just a minute, you're gonna start bing, 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 because this message is gonna come across. You see it's going to at presentations and it tells you who sent that message. If it had been from somebody else or from a, a, a receptor feed, it would have the feed that it came from. Right here, this one came from my Twitter account. Okay, Did ever, was everybody able to get that? Real hard to do, wasn't it? Try to send me a message, try to reply to it, please. I want to hear all the bing, bing, bings when it says, sorry, can't do that. Yep, she got one. <laughs> She's going to throw something at me too in a minute, I'm sure, but that's life. Okay? So does everybody see what comes back? Your students cannot communicate back to you. Parents cannot communicate back to you. 
you cannot communicate to any one individual. Well, you can put a username, you can put it, it's not going it's not gonna come in. I'm not gonna get it. So basically what Sally is doing is trying to even though you can't reply, trying to get you to create an account. No. Just get the information out to the public. This is just Sally is just created for you to send information out. They don't they don't harvest your phone numbers, they don't harvest your information at all. And you'll see in a minute when you set it up, all you're doing is putting your name and your email address in and linking it to your Twitter account. You, I already set mine up, and when, it, when I tried to text you back in... Because you've already got a Selly account. Okay. You see, the people who don't have a Selly account said it's trying to get a username and password. Get, get an account set up. So basically, the, the only... I mean, it's not a problem. It's I don't think it's actually wanting... It's confusion one. when parents and... Yeah, I see what you're saying. You see what I'm saying? Because we have one of those... We have one of the papers. Right. Well, so you know what? That's a good question, yeah. and I have been in contact with one of the co-founders of Selly, and I will ask them about that. He was—they're out of Portland, Oregon, mm -hmm. and what they really created this for was just freedom of speech. Right. Anybody to be able to put anything out there. I can see a way we can use it in the educational area. Right. So that's that's. Okay. But, but it's cool. Well, what is that going to? When they create the account, is that going to give you a way to see that they got the message, accepted the message, or whatever? Or, yeah. That makes sense. But you really yeah. wouldn't care because they just sound. Yeah. Their well, own. it's just like it, it, it. That's a good question. No, you cannot verify that anybody actually read your text message. No, you can't verify that they actually saw this piece of paper that you sent home. You just, you sent it out. This was an, an additional option for them to, to try to keep better informed. Well, it's kind of like, you know, if you're using it as an alert, you know, you can put it on the radio station. If they don't listen to the radio, you can't verify that. What city do you live in? What city? Hattiesburg. Do they really have a live radio station there anymore? They've got a couple of live people that sit there and push the buttons that bring the music down from the satellites. And that's everywhere, that's not Hattiesburg, that's Starkville, that's Jackson. You know, bigger metropolitan areas will have live programming. Most, play, most places, you can go along the highway, if you're listening to the same type of music, the different stations are gonna be playing almost the identical song at the same time. They have localized commercials and they may have localized news at seven in the morning and five in the evening, if you're lucky. But that's a good... It's a way where you can get it out to your people and you don't have to depend on somebody else to get it out when you need it out. But that's very yes, sir. So if you were an administrator and you want to send something out to your parents, you would never send a letter saying text to number 23599 and that would make it. You could do that to have them opt in, which is the way I would recommend doing it. Or if you have access to their cell phone numbers or emails, you can invite them that way to opt in. I would rather send... Yeah, you would have to, you would have to, but there, you're not going to be able to look at and find a phone number. I can't find a phone number here. If I want to go look at this person and I click on that, I get nothing. Okay, I get new user right here. I can send a message to them. I don't know who this is. They don't have my number at all, and then they can't communicate back to me. But the people that have the Selly accounts, does it show your username? No. This is, this is all you see. It shows your sale. Your sale is like, on one of my friends, he's had a long wildcats, and it shows your sale just like it did on the last message. He sent out Craig at presentations. You know, that's what it shows them. And obviously, if you set it up, to, to communicate, you can, but you can do. Set up an alert to just say that's what. Craig right. Said up here, that's why you've got the like message. If I, if I created a username and I put my like my, my name is Deborah Donovan, if I put Deb Donovan, would it show Deb 
That's going to be that's going to be your your account name is probably going to be Deb Donovan. The individual see my account name is Craig Jackson, but the different cells that I have. It depends on it depends on what your account name is. If you say your account name is Deb Donovan, mm -hmm. it's going to show up. Yeah. If you if you just have a cell called Mississippi M dot, mm -hmm. it's going to have Mississippi M dot. Then if you send out a text message from but inside, the list of subscribers. She's talking about the people that if they send a text back to you or when they subscribe, can you see their Username. Is that what you're asking? You no, no, you cannot. I'm sorry, I misunderstood. Uh, all you see, these people have put in their usernames. Nick, who's Nick? Nick, Tracy, we know. You're Tracy too? Well, I got two Tracys. This said that, look, y'all can't confuse me anymore now, okay? This ain't right. But see, they put, their, they put a username in. Most of your students and most of your users are going to be like this. You do not have to put your username in. Now, if somebody did put this in, Tracy, I don't like your name. Don't give me a username. And now, Tracy is going to get a message saying, you've been kicked out. Okay. Well, she will, but he won't, because I kicked him out. Okay. He will have to resubscribe, and you could put in your information. You know, if you are asked to put in a username, do not put your name. Make something up that nobody knows. Well, see, I already have a Selly account. I think it's probably what. That yeah. yeah, that's what it is. If you've got a Selly account, it already knows you. Yes, because nobody else is going to be able to communicate back and forth here. Now, there is a feature that you can do. You can send a poll. I think what she might be concerned with, too, is like uh, your principal wouldn't need to put in an anonymous username if he was going to be sending out texts from that group because it's going to show up anonymous at Walnut Wildcats. You could you could you could do that, yeah. or and that's that's a good that's a good idea. Nick. What you can also do is you can tie it to their Twitter account. The reason I like to tie it to a Twitter account, most everybody has Twitter. If you send something out from Nick, you know Twitter at Nick, and you say today is Monday, hashtag. Uh, MS135 that might be your course ID or what you're saying is going to be your course ID the receptor here if it sees that even if you're not the administrator if it sees something from Nick and has the hashtag MS135 it's going to go ahead and pass that through so your administrator your principal can have a Twitter account that's uh, in NW Rankin admin and then the hashtag might be whatever, a very specific hashtag that, they, that ties to this. And they could rotate those hashtags out so nobody gets, if they hack the account, they'd have to know all the different hashtags that could be possible. But then when they send that out, it would come in and say, like on the MSM dot one, when it comes out, you'll see it says, from the Mississippi M. Twitter account. So it tells you who that's from. You're not worrying about them having to have their name out there. It's just admin. That way also, if you've got a Twitter account for an administrator, like I've got one for RCU Blackboard Tech. At some point when I'm not with the RCU anymore, if people have started following the RCU BB Tech Twitter account, all I have to do is pass it on to the next person who's in charge and you keep that continuity. So if you've got an administrator, you have one that's your school underscore admin. And so when the principal moves up to superintendent or vice versa, you know, somebody else moves up into principal, they get that account and it keeps going. Did any of y'all get the poll that I sent out? Okay. 
Tracy's excused, he got kicked out. Did anybody else get the polls that we sent out? Okay, I got three people. One says it's lunchtime. One says it's not. One person doesn't know. That's probably Kelly. I didn't get your text. I didn't get it. Did you? Well, I could kick everybody out and start this drill again. <coughs> That's okay. But we're not going to do that. What I'm going to do is I am going to go through how to set up a Selly account. And if you want to watch this first, and then we'll we'll do this. Let me. Um, The network is a little bit slow. Yeah, it could be that. It could be sent out to parents. The question is, what you know, what feature, what could the poll be used for? It could be sent out uh, to get information from parents. You know, what is a good day for a field trip? of these three days, which, which would be the best time for us to get kids out of school for a couple of days? Or if we have to make up a snow day, which of these three dates is, or multiple days, it doesn't have to be three, it can be two, it can be five, whatever. But that's what it would be for, just to get some feedback real quick. And then you can say, well, I've got this information. Um, okay. I'm actually going to start trying to, this first time I've done this where we're recording live and doing the screencast, so it's going to be really cool because this microphone is keyed to that, but I've got the microphone here, and um, it should work okay. Okay, there's our live key. I've looked at that, and I have tried it, but this one just really seemed to, it for me, in my opinion, worked better and was the easiest one to use. No strings attached, no, no anything. I'll tell you what, Remind 101. I'll check that out and, and put something up about it on the blog. We'll go from there. Thank you for that. Okay. The first thing you're going to do is you've got to have some sort of a social media account when you go to log in at Selly. You'll see right here it says sign up and log in. If you don't have, if you sign up uh, with your Twitter account, it's going to pop up and ask you which account are you going to go into. So. Let me see if I can find an account real quick that I'm not using. No, I can't. That's not going to work either. Okay, if you're a district like superintendent or... Would I put, like, when I'm start choosing a username, would I want to put my name or put, like, DCS Webmaster or like that? You might want to put DCS Webmaster. Yeah. I mean, again, it depends on if you're going to pass this along or if it's just for you. That's why I have multiple Twitter accounts and multiple Selly accounts. I've got a personal Twitter account. I've got a professional Twitter account, which is Craig Jackson. I've got one specifically for Blackboard Tech Support. And I've got... But if you're a teacher... You're a teacher, you're, you may teach multiple classes, but you only need one name. So your user account name might be K. Cavanagh. Okay. And then when you get into your classes, it'd be first period science, second period STEM, whatever you had. And they would go like that. Most of you have, have Twitter accounts, right? Does anybody not have a Twitter account? You will. 
When you go in to Twitter, when you go into Selly rather, let's just go and say we've got this. It's going to ask you to log in with your Twitter account. You'll do that. It'll pop up the authorization app. If you haven't seen this, any, if you've got um, just about any social website now, it's going to ask you to tie it into your social media, either your Twitter or your Facebook or your LinkedIn account. So we'll put that in. We sign in. Once we sign in, it's going to come back, redirects us. And boom, we're in Selly. Now, that's the hard part. The next part, if you want to watch this, and then we'll go back through and let you create one, is how to create the actual cell. And that's a good point. So, I'm pretty sure you can create one without being linked to Twitter. It probably is better to link to Twitter because of the efficiency of sending out stuff. But I know that mine's not connected to my Twitter account. Or Facebook. So I just went in on the right there where it said create account. I just went in and created an account and it did not. It was okay. totally separate of Facebook and Twitter. So I have never... I have not done, and again, when I set this up a year ago, things are always changing. And I, and, and I apologize if I, if I misspoke. Nick, thank you for correcting me. No, no that's okay. Um, the thing is, unless some of these things, unless you use them every day, it changes. Well, our policy, it says if you're interacting with, stu interacting with students on social media. So our still kind of follows under the whole public relations policy. Well, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. You don't have the Selly account is not a Twitter account. It's just it's just identifying you. And once you have done that, you can just send out stuff yourself and not have anything coming from Twitter. But I will check into that and make sure. Okay. They're they're constantly updating things, which is a good thing about Selly and some of these. Other, they're constantly updating things. But I will check that out, and when I go back to make the screencast, I'm gonna say this is for Nick. Okay, you know, we rock. Okay. Now to start a cell, you click on Start Cell. You choose a unique name. You can see it's six to twenty characters, so we'll call this. Uh, Mecca 2013. Now, I hit next, and if that name is taken up, it won't let me have it. But as you can see, that worked. So the next thing I'm going to do is, on step two, who can join this? Nick said it best, we're trying to keep everything above board. We don't want anything hidden. So I'm always going to say anyone can join. That's the easiest thing. And I'm not going to require usernames for new users. Now, what kind of a cell do you want? As you can see, the curated chat, anybody can talk, but your administrator has to approve what goes out. I don't want that because I don't want to get somebody saying, well, he censored me. He didn't like what I was saying, so he wouldn't let my stuff go up there. I don't want that. The second thing, anybody can send a message to anybody, I definitely don't want that, okay? I'll censor you before I put that out there because this is not supposed to be a free-for-all. This is not a discussion forum, this is not a democracy, this is you giving out information. The the chat could be used in teacher if you had something like that, yes, but then you would probably have to go in into a, if you wanted to have a curated chat amongst faculty members, you'd have to go in and restrict who could join and who could not join and you probably want to go in and see now that's that's that do you want to know who the person is so you can know that's really one of your teachers or do you want to be anonymous so that teacher can speak their mind without having any fear of retribution and so that's where the curated chat is is kind of a 
Yeah. Your problem that be more than Pardon? Your problem that be more of an open chat, but you could allow. Well, that, like I said, the curated chat, you, somebody moderates it. The open chat, anybody can say anything, but if somebody just forgets how to turn the off switch on their, on their texting and they just start, you know, going crazy with stuff. Plus, remember, this is coming on your, on your text messages, okay? Do you want it dinging like that all day long because people are answering questions? I don't. I would think the curated chat from a teacher standpoint would be good if you're doing a discussion with your students, but you never know what kids are going to say. Um, <laughs> you could. You know, however you would like it to be, it can be. I'm, uh, no, I'm serious. I'm serious. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at it from a standpoint, uh, Blackboard Tech Support. If the system is down, I want to send a message saying the system is down. We'll let you know when it's back up. I don't want you doing like they did at the Super Bowl Sunday night, saying, well, it's going to be back up in 10 minutes. They said 15 minutes ago, and they've got, I don't want people calling, are we there yet, Daddy? I don't, you know, I want to send you one message and say, this is the way it is. But that's why I would choose alert. And again, they can try to reply, but they'll receive a message saying they can't. So we're almost home now. The fourth thing that we do is we put our welcome message and basically, I send my welcome message to my blog site that says, here are the help, the help keys, here are the other cells I've got. If you have any questions, contact me here. You can put your cell location, what city or what school or whatever you'd like to do. You can put, if you've got a school logo, you can put that in there. You can put your website. And then what I do is I make it public to the world. As you can see, Nick, you can attest to this. Anybody can see this. Anybody can go to the Selly site and look up your cell name or go and look by state and see if they can find you. And they can look at all of the messages that are going down. This last one is key. Make sure that your members understand their messages are public on the web. There's your transparency, folks. You're not hiding anything. Plus, they keep archives. Now, like I said, one of the things that my director had questions, well, what if, what if they wanted to go back and look at the archives of a conversation of what you've been sending out? The guy says, let us know what you need, we'll give it to you. They're not trying to, you know, keep track of you, but if you do need it, they will do that for you. You can put hashtags to describe your cell and put the mission of the cell, then you click finish. At this point, Your cell has been started, and you can see your members, you can email to get your email. If you want new members, you can actually go in and click on members and invite new members. When you invite the new members, you can either put email or text right there. And then you can customize your invitation and preview of what it has, okay? If you don't want to, you simply go back to your, to your cell and you're ready to begin sending out messages. Again, the easy part about this, it's the same number, 23559, no matter what cell you create, 23559 is the number. The only difference is the number, the, the name of the cell, okay? Any questions? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Send out alert only to your kids. Now the situation is happening when I sent something back and you have an anonymous name. What's not to say that they have a cell account and then, you know, like put something new out there for kids, social media they like to get it too. And like we've had incidents where kids do a lot of things on Facebook and be mm -hmm. kind of bash each other back and forth. What's what can we do to control it in any type of way? Okay, as far as how to control kids cyberbullying people on Facebook. I bully like some of the stuff like how the administrator can almost say what can go out and what can't. Are we allowed, kids are allowed to see that for our kids once they, if they join or something like that? Okay, the kids are getting this. They're not, they're not 
this is not a social media site like Facebook or, tw or Twitter. This is not where they communicate freely back and forth with everybody. This is no different than you walking around and handing out stuff to people to take home to their parents. They can't you know, change your stuff because it's already written in there, it's already printed out. With Selly, it's the same thing. You're sending out a message saying, uh, I'm gonna be out Tuesday at Mecca. You will have a student uh, or a substitute teacher. Be sure to do your assignment. That's what you're sending out. That way, if somebody says, well, and what's your name? Uh, Vanessa. Somebody says, Miss Vanessa's not gonna be there Tuesday, so I'm not gonna go sit there with a substitute. I'm gonna stay home. You know, they might, you know, I'm not, not saying they did, but that's all they could do. They could not sit there and say, oh, Miss Vanessa's not doing that. She's just going up to Jackson to go to the Dixie National and watch rodeo. Okay, so they can't do that. This is just, you send it out, they get it and read it. Okay? That's the use I'm recommending here. Right. And, and Nick is right. Nick, where are you from? Walnut. Walnut, okay. The whole feature is like having a clicker that the kids have to use their text feature for. Okay? So that's one use you would have. You're right. I mean, and Nick's right. I am Blackboard tech support. I am not in the classroom. Okay? So I don't know some of these uses. But it is perfect for doing a poll. Okay? And as a teacher, Nick, I might defer to you to explain some of the ways that you're using it, even. But, but again, you're not, I don't see this as a place for an open chat, simply because I don't want my phone going ding, 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 ding all day long. I want a message that's important and that's timely to come across. Whether it's a poll saying, you know, do you want to meet for dinner tonight? at 6.30 to go to Carrabba's or Olive Garden or Bonefish Grill. You know, that's the kind of feedback I want. Or you can send it to the parents. And Nick's right. There's several features of it that you can use. So the best thing to do is get like a group of five teachers that may want to test it and just say, well, we're practice class and test the features on it because there are several there that you can use. Thank you for that, Nick. I appreciate it. I'm going to catch up with you when this is done. I ain't got no money, so I guess I'm just gonna have to hit you. I don't know. <laughs> free, you get the free lunch too, okay. Everybody in here, lunch is on me today, okay? <laughs> Everybody be sure to go down there and tell them Craig sent you. But what I'd like to do now is I'd like to actually give you an opportunity. How many of you have created cells? Nick, Tracy, you just created yours? Has everybody already created their cells in here this morning? The account. The account, have you created a cell yet? No. Miss Cavanaugh. <laughs> kindergarten, you know, come on. <laughs> come up here, Miss Cavanaugh. No, thank you. Come on. No. It's easy. I got it right here. But they, they, they can't see what you're doing. I want somebody to come up here and create a cell for me. I want to watch you set, do this and let everybody see what you're doing. <laughs> come on. Hey, look. I've already... I'm like, no, come up here and help me. Right here, you, can, you can do it right here. You're not going to do it on yours. You're going to do it on mine. Um. <laughs> You can tell we're not going to go to the grave together, right? Because she's going to kill me. Okay, this is Kelly Cavanaugh from Ocean Springs. Kindergarten teacher. And what you're going to do is you're going to come back up. I'm not going in on my... No, you're just going to go on, on this account right here. Okay. And Kelly, walk us through what we're going to do. You're in your account. What's the first thing we're going to do to create a new cell? We're going to um, uh, come over here. A new cell. We're going to start a cell. Okay, where is it? Right here. Up here on the upper left hand side. Click on. Click on start cell. Okay. Now, we're going to choose that unique name for the cell. About money. Okay. The one thing about this is you can delete your cells whenever you need to. Okay. Okay, you've got your name. As you can see, people will text this information to 23559. So now we're going to hit next. Y'all sing along now if you got, if you got, you know, help her out. Help me out. This channel is reserved. Uh-oh. So sorry. Thanks for playing. Go back. See, if you can't get that, it will block you from getting that cell. Okay. Okay. 
Okay. Again, anyone can join or restrict it. If you are using it as an alert system, you want anyone to join because you want everybody to see what information you're sending out. And this is especially good if you're doing something for kids or for parents of kids to let them know you've got exams. We live in a litigious society that will say, well, they didn't tell me we're having a test, so I'm going to sue them. So always do it open for anyone to join. And next. What type of cell do you want? Do you want it to be just alerts? Do you want it to be a chat for anybody to say anything? Or do you want it to be a curated chat where you moderate? Which would you like? I generally go with alert simply because I don't want anybody, I, I want to get information out. As Blackboard takes support, when the system goes down, I want them to know it. That's all I want to know. And I scroll down and complete that. You scroll down. And do next. And now you're really done at that point after the third step. This is just where you can go into your message, your cells, location, different things. So scroll back down to the bottom, please. You want to keep it public to the world. You want to be as transparent as possible. Once you've done that, you scroll down and finish it. Now, if anybody joined Monkey One, If you join Monkey One, she can send out a message and go from there. Okay? Any questions on just creating your cellular account or creating your cell? Sit down, man. You may sit down now, Miss Cavanaugh. I told you don't sit at the front, but you didn't believe me. Now, for those of you who are using Selly already, that's Tracy and Nick. Do you use the receptor settings? Okay. What we've got in each one of these things, and I'm going to go to my test cell. You've got an area at the bottom for receptors. And this is, this is very beneficial if you are trying to keep information, if your superintendent of education has a Twitter account, if your principal has a Twitter account, uh, if you want to keep up with your emergency management agency in your county. You can go in with the receptors and say when, when a specific Twitter account tweets something out and has a specific filter, a specific hashtag with it, that will then be sent out to your cell. Okay, let me, let me just go back and do the presentation cell because everybody except Tracy is in that one. Yes, sir. Let's see. I forget which one. Let's see. Okay, right here. You go to 23559 and you say stop and then the cell name. And I'm sorry I had to look that up. I don't get in and out of them. And I do have a link to these commands that, that Sally has. You just, if you want to get out of Monkey One, you do 23559 and you say stop Monkey One and you'll be removed. So Kelly, you're, you're out of business. They don't want your cell anymore. Let's go back to presentations and let's set up a hashtag receptor who's got a Twitter account that they want to share real quick okay
No. Okay, we're going to put MS Mecca 13. Okay, that's so what we're going to do is we're, we're fixing to put a receptor so that anytime this Twitter account sends something out that says MS Mecca 13 in it, <coughs> it's going to be posted here. So, Tina, what I'd like you to do, please, is I would like you to send out a message that just says, This is a test. Nothing else. This is a test. And as soon as she gets this done, we're going to see what happens. You just go to you just go to uh, go to your Twitter account. Oh. This is this is tying Sally to your Twitter account. This is so that if you're sitting right here, you send out a message to anybody that's following you on Twitter, and also it's going to the Sally account. So just put this as a test. Is there a way to segment that through Twitter, or do you have to use separate accounts? Say that again, please. Is there a way to segment that through Twitter, or do you have to use separate accounts? Like, so she if she be on her Twitter account, and she's Twittering. This is a test. Her Twitter followers will be like, which test is That's right. That's, that's just going out to anybody in general on her Twitter account. So that's the way it's going to work. That's the way that works. I don't have to put hashtags. No, you just put this as a test and send it out. Now, just for grins, let's go over here and sign in. Give me one second, please, Tina. Okay, Tina Streeter 2. Okay, you see, Tina has put, this is a test of my Sally account. It came out on Twitter. Now, Tina. You like my second message too? Please, someone make the clowns go away. <laughs> Are you calling me a clown? No, the one's downstairs. downstairs. Arg, you're a pirate. It is a good thing I decided not to wear my clown suit today. Yeah. I had it all set out, the wig and the nose and everything. <laughs> now, if you will go in on Twitter again, and this time say, now this is being tweeted out and texted out via Selly. Okay. And then put the hashtag MSMecca13. And what will happen is the phones will start, except Tracy's, will start binging all over the place. Texted and tweeted. Texted and tweeted at the same time. Selly. And then put your hashtag MS Mecca 13, please. While we got downtime, they actually text the results to the polls. Yeah, the poll to the poll group. Say again? It actually texts the results of the After 30 minutes, after 30 minutes, it does. Yes, you're correct. That's pretty cool. I mean, if you're using it as a classroom feature. I forgot to mention that. See? If they use it with you. You know what? Lunch is on Nick today. He's doing such a good job. Nick, come up here and take over for me. <laughs> He's like, yeah, I don't want to do this. I just want my CEUs. Get me out of here. So let's see what we've got now. Tina has now Okay, there's Tina's new tweet that says it's being tweeted and texted via Sally. So all of her Twitter followers may or may not have looked at. They may come look at it and say, what, what's she talking about? But when I go right here, now because of the hashtag that I've got set up as a receptor, you see it says right here, now this is being texted and tweeted. It's coming from Tina, Tina Sweeter. T <laughs> Thank you very much. Tina Streeter too, and it's going to my presentation cell. So anybody that's on my presentation cell gets that information. It's only tied to her account. It's only tied to that hashtag. To keep, and again, yeah, people can get hacked. We're adults, we can say this. You know, Twitter got hacked last weekend for 250,000 different accounts. If you use one password, 
on your account, it's liable to get hacked. So what you can do is you could have three or four different hashtags that you could rotate through as your receptor and send your information out. By doing this, you can have four or five different teachers who can have input on your text messaging account without you having to worry about anything. If, you, if you've got their name set up as a receptor. Nick, what's your Twitter account? Who does, uh, who does, who tweets? I got what, What's yours? <laughs> this ain't funny. Another Tracy. <laughs> okay, it's Tracy, Trey? Trey Tracy. Is that correct? Lunch is on me. Okay, and we'll call your hashtag Trey Moore. So now, if Trey were to text something out, or were, were to tweet something out, if he used the Trey Moore hashtag, it would go out to everybody here. If he wanted to say, meet me at the Cabot Lodge at 5.30 for free popcorn and coke he can do that it goes out to anybody that's following him on twitter that doesn't have the selly account and if they happen to see it roll through there they're in good shape also would go out on the text messages yes sir no you do hashtags are simply a search it's a keyword search symbol Okay, the question is the difference, what, what does the hashtag, how does the hashtag play into the sending of the message? With any text message, you send it to a specific number, 23559, you've got 140 characters in the body. You can say, follow Trey at Trey Tracy. He is a good instructor, hashtag MS Mecca 13. What you've got, the at Trey Tracy is his Twitter account. That's where you're using the at sign. The hashtag says MS Mecca 13. When I go to the Twitter account and where Tina has MS Mecca 13, if I click on that, it's gonna search for anything that has that hashtag, here's Ellie that's tweeted something about Google Plus, Cliff Mims, there's Tina, Sean Owen presenting again, at MS Mecca. So that just ties in anybody that's tweeted about that specific message in Twitter. In Selly, that's your ID code, that, that's, your, that's your PIN number, basically. It's coming from your Twitter account, and this, this hashtag verifies that it is in fact you, and that it is, in fact, going to be sent out on a text message. It allows you to keep tweeting, but it's not going to pick up your tweet until, right. until you put that hashtag. So you could technically do, like, your kids in your first period class. Right. On, on, um... So now that you get that back to my Twitter account, you're saying I have to send a tweet to at Trey Moore to broadcast everybody? No. To send a message to everybody, simply send out a tweet and put hashtag Trey Moore. Are you sending something? Well, we'll find out, won't we? I'm not even going to ask him that question. That kind of takes away the fun, right? You just on your cell phone and set it on Twitter. You really wouldn't have to have the hashtag or, or the at symbol. You can do it from the computer interface and send that yeah. message. You type in, no silly marks, no that. And then you no hashtag. You know what See, here's the, here's the weather one I've got for Starkville because a lot of times you don't keep up with email, you're, you're not keeping up with Twitter, or people are just trying to get stuff out there just to be the first one to get it out. 
there have been weather statements that have come across. This one came across on the 30th. We had a severe thunderstorm warning come across in the morning. We've had other alerts that came through. But because of the way I've got my receptor set up down here, unless it comes across from WCBI's Twitter account, and it's got to say Octibaha County in it, if it does not have Octibaha County from this one, it doesn't get sent out. It does not have to be a hashtag. You can, I put the hashtag because sometimes somebody might just use that word. Yeah. Or that might be a part of a word. Mecca could be a, a Muslim trek. You know, the, the, the city, of course it's two C's, not one. But if you have that hashtag, it will specify. That's what it's looking for. Now, let's see if Traymore sent anything out. Nope, he didn't. But now, Tina has texted something else out, and she sent this to at DC2score. That's somebody's Twitter account. And then the hashtag DCS2core. I'm not sure which hashtag you're following with that. Uh, I'm just learning. Well, that's okay. That's okay. Uh, that's how you directed me. No, the, the hashtag portion. What, what hashtag is... The at, the at one is, is the Twitter account. Mm -hmm. The hashtag is just the keyword you're looking for. Right. Okay. And then the MS Mecca 13. If I wanted to, I could actually go over here and go to the D2S score. And there is Chad Everett. Christy Bennett Ryan is talking about, very excited about K2CSS, and there's your DCS2 core. So that's how you tie, and that's how you use this as a, as a Twitter as a search engine, real-time search engine. If you put D2S2 score, two core. that too. Common core. It's our curriculum. Webmasters. <laughs> but no, if you, if you put that in Google, you're not going to come up with the same results. It's probably going to laugh at you and say, did you mean this but with twitter you can follow also what you can do because you're doing that you can find people and you can start following them if they've got good information which helps you keep up with that and then you might want to put that person depending uh, there's one guy that tweets a couple hundred times a day i took him off my twitter feed i don't need that you know i need this to be something that comes out here one one at a time and go from there uh, with the, I'm sorry, was there a question? What you can also do with your hashtags, when you add your receptors, you can add something from an RSS feed. How many people know what an RSS feed is? Really simple syndication. It's just when somebody sends something out, if they've got, if they're linked up to a, to a feed, it will give that information. And we'll put it in here. What I can do is I can go to my Mecca session and find my entries RSS feed. I can then say anytime I send something out, it's going to actually put that feed up there and say it's ready to go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come here save that feed. I'm going to go to, where is it? New post. Someone doing that, if you have a blog, it feeds off of that. Anytime you do an update to your blog, Correct. students, teachers, whatever. Can, can catch that. I don't know why I'm not, uh, I don't know why that's not connecting right now. Let's see if I can go this way at it. It always happens. You know, you, you go to do something and it just... But hey, just to let you know, I've had lots of experience having things fail on me, so you're in good hands.
These people say they love to be on camera. Which ones? All of these. Excellent. Deb Donovan, Tracy, Nick, <coughs> Trey Trey, Trey Moore. Trey yeah. Trey. Well, there's three of them. I should have said Trey Trey Trey. But they love to be on here. Okay, we'll publish this and come back and delete it in a little bit. But now, in just a couple of seconds, the network is just a little bit slow. There it goes. And now in just a second, we should have a new one that pops up right here. That'll be out in just a second. Sometimes it does take, you know, plus the network is kind of boxed up here. Um, come on. Um, if you've got a link on Facebook, and I don't do a lot of Facebook, I uh, find that too invasive. But if well, if you uh, if they've got a place where you can go in and and take an RSS feed, you can do that. No. No. The the receptors. No. With the receptors, you're either going to do Twitter or an RSS feed. So if you've got, and I'll have to look and see if, if Facebook, does anybody know if Facebook has an RSS feed? Deb, no? I don't think so either. But like I said, Facebook to me is really invasive. They like to change their, their security settings. Just, hey, it's Tuesday, it's 8.30, let's, yes ma'am. On the RSS feed, mm -hmm. does it have an embed code where you can put it on the web page? The Selly or the RSS feed? The Selly. It does not have an embed code, but you can you can probably do an iframe with it. Okay. Now I tell you what I will do. Well, no, I like I said I'll talk to the I'll talk to the guy this afternoon. Uh, I'll check and see if they can, if they, because because Russell told me that if we needed to, they can work with us to create new features and everything, and that's something I never even thought about, which would be an excellent idea, which again would give you even more transparency than ever. You could say join, you know, opt into this cell and get the messages, but you can still see the messages right there. The only good thing about the the good thing about Selly is the good thing about Selly is if the web goes down, your cell phone's still up. So you can still get information out there and if your school district, now obviously if your school district says you cannot do this, don't tell them Craig said you can, because I didn't. But if your school district will let you, this is an outstanding way for you to give more information out to your students other than just hard copy, trying to send out batch emails and if somebody changes their address or if they cut off their service or if the network's down you can't get information out but that's again you can have as many you can have as many receptors in there as you would like again the more receptors you get in <coughs> it can get crazy when hurricane isaac came through i set up a, a selling account for the hurricane and i had it following Mississippi Emergency Management, National Weather Service Jackson, and the governor's office. Eventually I put MDOT in. I also had the state of Louisiana on there. The state of Louisiana would sit there and tweet out, it was, it was with their, their Twitter account, hashtag Isaac. 
Louisiana's emergency management system would sit out and tweet out every sentence that the governor made a comment on. This thing was just going, I turned it off. I didn't want that. I want the governor's office to say there's a dam at Percy Quinn Park that, that has not busted yet, even though the newspapers and TV said it had. He said that and that was it. Four hours later, we got some Mississippi Mercy Man said, Park, you know, Percy Quinn Park is still fine. That's it. Now, they were still tweeting the stuff from the governor of Louisiana at that time. But that's what you don't, the more receptors you get different people, that's going to be giving out just too many text messages. What I would do with something like that is I would do what I'm going to talk about at 3 o'clock is I would create an online newspaper that has that information in it. So you can have multiple sources and the online newspaper you can embed on your website. But for Sally, this is just going to be for immediate time sensitive information that can be customized to whatever feeds you need to come to. Either you, and, and also one other thing I, meant, I, should, I should mention while we're talking about receptors. You Sally, I mean you, you Twitter users, how many of you use the schedule feature to schedule a tweet to go out at a specific see where can I delete you again oh wait a minute you're already off of there with the Twitter account you can schedule something to go out you can sit down on Sunday afternoon or Sunday night when the lights are out in New Orleans and you can say okay need to uh, remind system going down for maintenance on February the 7th so I want to send this out on February the 6th at 8 a.m. And you tweet it out and it's scheduled. Then at a specific time, it shows up on Twitter. You can do that, or in Selly, I can sit there and say, let's see, schedule a message, central time zone, and I'm going to say today at 9.15, Okay, this is my scheduled message. As you can see at 9.15, whoop, I was already past that. Let me do this again at 9.25. 9.25. Spelling doesn't count with me, okay? rendered fingers. So now this one will go out at 9.25 on February the 5th. So in five minutes from now when I'm just wandering around here talking, your phone's going to buzz again because of something I scheduled. I could also schedule it in Twitter. Okay? Anybody want to schedule one in Twitter to go off at 9.30? Who's got a Twitter account? Tina. You still got one, Shelby. You want to do yours? Yeah. What's your account, Shelby? Shelby? Okay, hang on one second. Let me go back. Okay, receptors, Twitter, and yours is what? Okay, and we're going to call this one MS Mecca 13. Now, do you know how to do a scheduled tweet? I think so. Okay. I usually just do it in real time. We want to do a, a scheduled tweet because we want this to go off at 9.30. You just go to your Twitter account. So you can just click on the blue icon up here and it'll... Maybe it's well, let's see. We'll blame this on one of the Tracys, but we ain't gonna say which one. But not this one, because she smiled at me, so we're it's not gonna. Go internet, yeah, that's what it was. Well. I'm in Google Chrome. Yeah. Well, Tina, if you want to tweet one out, you can you can schedule one. And all you do is you just go up. In case you're not familiar with it, in the Twitter account.
You can pose a new tweet. Well, this doesn't have the schedule in it. Well, that's no good. And see, if I hadn't put that DCS2 core, it would work. We'll blame it on somebody. Well, they used to have it right here. Yeah, a tweet deck does it, but, but um, and I do use, how many of you use tweet deck? It's a great tool if you don't use it. Tweet deck is a free download. Um, I already had it open. Tweet deck allows you to come in and follow multiple Twitter accounts. If you've got multiple Twitter accounts, you can follow your Facebook account, you can send messages, you can search for messages, you can create columns just to follow certain things. And I do believe the network is down. Is anybody else having trouble? Back, Did it? It comes back here. TweetDeck.com. And for some reason, it's just not coming up here right now. But with TweetDeck.com, you can go in and set up. You can download to your machine. There we go. And you can have multiple columns. As you can see, I've got timelines, interactions, timelines for me, for RCUBB Tech. If I'm following anybody that mentions Selly on here, I can create a column, and it will just follow Selly. Just following Joe Deere. If I want to keep up with weather, I can do whatever I want to with this. The good thing about TweetDeck is you can download it for your desktop, but you can also log in on their website and sign to your account, and it will match up the exact same sequence of things as you've got here. If I want to go in and add a column for, uh, let's see, let's do it here. MS Mecca 13. I can find that. And there they are. And now what I can do is I can add a column that just follows my tweets or people who are tweeting from Mecca right here. It's real time. As they start doing things, it's going to pop up. Let's see if I can. Both. You download it onto your computer, and then you can sign up with your account. Once you've done that, you can actually go online and use the web interface to do it. So no matter where you are, you don't have to worry about having a little bitty phone to try to do things with. Let's see if I can find. Both of them, well, one of them was scheduled to go out at 925. And then I just got the, the RFS speed. The okay. Now, you see the MS Mecca 13, I'm fixing to tweet out a message. And it's posted. And as soon as it posts, and of course, now mine's not going to post. I know what the problem is. The problem is sometimes this is set to go over to the wireless network and the wireless doesn't want to work here on my cell phone. The cell message, and again, as Deb mentioned, this is the one that was scheduled at 9.25 a.m. and it tells you that it was scheduled and it went out. So I was in the middle of wandering around and it sent itself out. So you can schedule things ahead of time if you've got uh, band trips. You know, what uniform are you going to wear? What time is band rehearsal? You can go ahead and schedule that 
without having to send it out five minutes or ten minutes before it's time. You can have it go out, okay. There it went. So now, in just a second, that should pop up right there, let's see. You know, the sad thing is, when you tweet and you have multiple accounts, make sure you send it out on the right account. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's try this again. Paste it. Send it to the right Twitter account this time. And now we'll see if it comes back up. But you can do anything you want. You can move, reposition the columns wherever you want to in the sequence of things. Again, you can go in and follow the hashtags. There's your Hail State hashtag that everybody is doing. If you were doing the Mississippi Mecca, you could go in and look at that. Here's the D uh, DCS2 core. And there's, again, Christy Bennett Ryan, S. E. Elmore, or S. Elmore, Lo Morose. So you don't have that many popping up there. Anyway, are there questions? Yes, ma'am. Um, back on the um, selling account, it says finish account set up, like connect your phone, connect your email address. Okay. That's, that's a good question. Back on Selly. On the settings. Let's see, where is it? No, it's up here. It's under... Okay, connect your phone to get full access. You can connect to your Facebook account. You can do your email. What that will do is, if you get an email, if you get anything on Selly, it'll come to your email account too, which is another, another good option. I don't like to lock it into my phone because then if you go in and try to, and that's probably what you've done, Nick, you probably got yours tied to your phone and that's why it was wanting your username to make sure and verify you are who you say you are. So you can do that. One thing about it, if you, if you are a, a um, Android user, how many use Android phones in here? You can go to Google Play and you can get a Selly app, which let's see. You can't link that to a Google Voice number though, by the way. Try to do that. I use right. Google Voice for <coughs> get my emails and things like that. Or, uh, voice you know, I need to talk to you sometime, Nick. Because no, he's he's using a lot of the same things. I don't know how long you've been using Selly. I don't know how long you've been using Google Voice. I've been using Google Voice for about two years now with RCU Blackboard Tech. If you ever have a technology problem with Blackboard, you can text me or you can email me, give me your phone number, and I can call you back for free. Doesn't cost you a penny. Um, the Google Voice that I've got here, I've got a number. 205 or 662 205 6323. And if anybody wants to call that number, that's going to go and ring on my office desk. It's also going to ring on my cell phone, but you cannot tie it to a Google Voice number. That, that is correct. You probably can't tie it to, a, uh, I don't know if you can do it to Vonage or, or um, I don't think it will be. Try to set it up like that so I can leave it all separate to the one person when they took it over. Right. You know what I'm about? And you have to actually tie it to a physical device. Yeah, well, that's, that's, but again, if you just, if you have the, if you have it tied to a Twitter account, like I said, the RCUBB Tech Twitter account and the RCUBB Tech Google Voice account and the RCUBB Tech Selly account, when I go, they stay. That's why I have a separate one for my, for my first professional. 
Well, thanks for sharing that. I, I had not even thought about telling people that. Uh, the Selly account, the, the app right here, again, you, you tie it into your uh, Twitter name or whatnot, or your Facebook. I hate it when they start popping up. Here's how you do this. Get started. Yes, username. And once I log in, I wish I... It shows all of my cell accounts that I have. You can just scroll up and down. Here's the, the monkey one that Ms. Cavanaugh created. If I want to go look at it, I can simply click on the MSM dot and it brings me up to that particular cell. I can administer it from my cell phone. Right now they don't have anything for the iPhones, but if you do have an Android, you can do that. And again, you can look at it. You can go down and you can do your options such as what are your receptors, you want to do alert only, all the things that you can do on the screen interface, you can do on your cell phone. So, are there any questions? Any comments? Did anybody bring any tomatoes or anything with them today? Good. If I was in the teaching realm, I'd, I'd be using this. And how would you use it? It would be good for, uh, yeah. for parent, uh, you know, information. Okay. Student, student blog, blog and stuff like that. Myself. See, I had an idea for kindergarten. Your kindergarten. I used to be a kindergarten teacher, and I would think if I had a like an iPod Touch Center, mm -hmm. it could be used in the same way if you set the accounts up on the phones. Right. On the, on the units. Okay. Uh, we have a lot of Remind 101 users in our district. Mm -hmm. I don't know the difference, but... I'm going to check and see on Remind 101. I don't know what the this cost is. is. Yeah, kind of easy for elementary, like, I think elementary teachers would like this. Well, any... I like the way that it ties to the Twitter account, because I tried using it some last year, uh, and, and the feature was probably there. I just didn't explore it deep enough, but I would use a Twitter account to send out stuff, and then mm -hmm. I'd have to turn around and I'd put it on sale, yeah. and then I'd send out an email, and then, but if you can tie it off... Well, account, and here's what, you can, here's what you can do. If you use TweetDeck, mm -hmm. and I want to send out a message, it's the same basic interface that you have with Twitter. The only difference is I've got multiple Twitter accounts, but I've got my Facebook account. So if I go right here, type a message, and send it out on my Craig Jackson with the receptor, and send it out to the Facebook, it goes out to anybody that's following me on Twitter, it goes out to anybody that's following me on Facebook, and it goes out and it's posted on Selly at the same time. Well, so it gets all three birds. It does not send emails. When are we going to hit the point where we have sensory overload when a parent <laughs> has Facebook, Twitter, and Selly, and they start complaining about getting too many interfaces? Well, again, <laughs> and, and that's a good. We have. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That's a good. <laughs> But see, here's the thing, and this is, this is a good point, Nick. Sensory overload. Twitter is going to be all day long. Facebook is going to be all day long. The cell messages, the text messages, are in emergency or in timely situations. That's why you don't want to have eight or ten people tweeting, you know, sending stuff to that. You want this to be something that is important and that is timely. I like the idea of how it, has, how it has a hashtag because, like, you know, if I go out to eat with, you know, like we leave and we go grab a bite to eat, and you, you know, hashtag place to go for lunch or McDonald's or whatever, well, then that may go to a certain group of friends that you may say whatever, and it goes to your students, and then another exactly. Hashtag for and I, Tracy, I don't know if I explained that well. Tracy just did a good job. You can have eight or ten cells in your Selly account. Friends, family, students, relatives, people you don't like. And so what you can do is by, by having that receptor, that hashtag receptor, 
you can send stuff out and it's automatically diverted to the right cell account. So if they're not following you on Twitter and they're just getting that cell message, they don't see what was the commercial where they used to send the guy and they'd have taco day and he'd be standing outside his office and didn't know he was invited. <laughs> well, you could, you could do that. You could simply send out, you know, your students, they're following this. Parents are following this one. Now, if the student is following you on Twitter, which more than likely they're not, then only the parents are going to see that. And people are, like I said, Twitter just rolls through the day. And, and with this, I was in uh, Florida a couple of weeks ago at a conference. And at 4 o'clock in the morning, a tornado warning rolled through Starkville. And I was able to know that, so I could call and check on a couple of people to make sure that, that, that there wasn't a tornado on the ground there or not. Whereas at 4 o'clock in the morning, I'm not up watching Twitter. And I don't want that thing binging all night long. So, you know, I had a friend who actually turned off because, this is a true story, last week when they had that storm front that came through on Tuesday night, I believe it was, Tuesday or Wednesday night, we were supposed to get the storms about 3 o'clock in Starkville. And I've got a friend who's very weather sensitive. He's lived in the Delta, lived through some tornadoes. He's very, very worried about them. He got on the Starkville weather cell and turned off his weather alert. And sure enough, at three o'clock in the morning when the National Weather Service put out the tornado warning or severe thunderstorm warning for Starkville, his cell went off and it woke him up. And he went and got up and checked on everything and, and certainly the National Weather Service had just issued it like three minutes before. So it's, a, it's another way so that no matter where you are, you can keep up with what's going on if your school needs to, to do things like that. So it's a, it's a good application. Um, I've thoroughly enjoyed using it for the past year and a half and continually come up with new ideas. Like I said, I've talked to the actual co-founder of the company. His name is Russell Okamata. He's out in Portland and he has, we had a good hour and a half conversation one day about how could we use it when, when there is such a, a social media controversy. You know, nobody wants them to use it, but everybody uses it. And other than tying it into your Twitter or Facebook account, and, and Nick, I'm going to check and see if you have to do that. I don't, I, I, last time I signed up a new account, I had to do that. But that's been a few months back, six months ago or so. But it's just a good way to get information out to students. It's a good way to do a quick poll of your fellow teachers. Uh, you don't have to worry about kicking anybody out because you don't know who they are. Well, except for, let's see, who was silly enough to put their names on here? Uh, let's see. Cells. Presentations. Kick you out? You're out of here. <laughs> okay, Dr. T. Daniel. I'm sorry, no, that's, that's, this is this is this is Doc. You're Vanessa Sibley. Okay. Also, you notice this phone right here. Dr. T. Daniel has opted out of messages. DCS Webmaster has opted out of receiving messages. The ones with the phone are still receiving messages. When I kick somebody out. Okay, you sure want to kick them out? You're gone. Your phone will buzz in just a minute and say, have a nice day. Is there any way to change the uh, username? Because I tried and it said I've used the next. Um, you're limited to, I believe, 16 characters. Let me see. Edit profile. Where is it? Where's my username?
And see, there's the emails that I've got these connected to in the Twitter account. Change username. Six to 20 characters. And you have a maximum number of times that you can create a username, it's three times. That's to keep people from just constantly changing your username if they've been banned or something. Did you have 20 characters? Did you have, did you have spaces in it? No spaces. It was just my entire name all together. Vanessa, I think you've got your whole name here. Well, well, I can't tell you now because I kicked you out. Sorry about that. <laughs> you asked me to do it, though. I didn't want to do it. I think you can. It didn't let me. It didn't let you. <laughs> 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 Unless there's a way you can. That mm -hmm. I tried that. Hmm. What did it say? It said, uh, I. Maybe that maybe they've changed that now. You used to be able to get in again. I uh, don't think so because there's no way I can. Um, it's. I could probably send an invite. When I tried to do it again, it just said you've been kicked out from that cell. Well, there's no setting to. Um, Hmm. I see they've changed this right here into the active members. They're making it optional whether you want. I mean, you've made it optional whether or not they want to be known. Yeah. But they put it in there. You can't. I, I will. I will ask Russell about that. Because see, since the last time I've used this and got into the members, you've got the ability to make somebody a curator. Whereas before you didn't, unless you were in the in the curated chat mode. So this way you're basically making somebody else an admin. I don't know if I can. What's your what's yours, Tracy? Your cell number. Wait a minute. Six zero one. 310-1266 and Vanessa and see I don't like that because now I've got your numbers but no, I'm, I'm serious that you don't want you don't want it. you want it to be anonymous well I don't know I got a sense of humor let's see Let's see. Hmm. Okay, Trace, you're invited, and Vanessa are invited. So that's that, they've got that fixed where you can't do it. But let's see. I've got to figure out. See, notice you only put his cell phone number in, but it automatically tied his cell phone to his to his name. Right, and that's not a good thing in my book. Well, it depends on your application. For you, no. You're right, and, and Nick, thank you very much for keeping me on on track. No, seriously, I mean because. The application I use it for is not the same application that instructors are going to be using it for. And you need to tell me that so I can you know, keep that in mind. Because I'm looking at it from a different, different perspective. Thank you very much. I'm sincere about that. I just, the, I guess the thing I'm concerned about is, is with Blackboard. I don't want somebody to call them and say, well, you have access to my phone number. What else do you have access to of my information? Mm -hmm. you know, you're, you're in Stark from Mississippi. You're not down in Hattiesburg. Mm -hmm. what, why do you have to have this information? You're not in my school. You don't have anything to do. How do you have this? And that's why I just like to have, again, the new users, because now if I wanted to send something to Nick Hopper. But you can't go through now since you've done that invite. You can't go back and look and see what the numbers are now that you've sent that. Right. Say again? 
So in other words, somebody comes up to you and says, I'm having trouble getting on this, and you say, well, here, let me just invite you. I mean, you look at the number for two seconds. You can't go back now and look and see, well, now what number did I put in? Let's see. To a username that only I don't think you can. I don't think you can. Let's see, there's Nick. I mean, if you sent out a message that said it, it would still be there, but Shh. you're just saying, uh, I mean, really that discussion, though, I mean, from a teacher standpoint, you're going to get the parents phone number whenever they come to open house or whatever. Yeah. You, you know, you're going to have it from the principal. Um, you know, really that discussion. Now, the little beep you heard, that was Sally alerting me that we had another message and that who is uh, CTS? Who, me. What's your name? Shelby. Shelby. Well, it's CTS. I'm like, Shelby doesn't start with a C. <laughs> but so you can see where this one just sent out. This was the one I guess that you had scheduled and it just got here. You see this message right here. I have Nick's name on my list. Okay? If I go into presentations, I can see Nick's name. And so I'm thinking, oh hey, I can send Nick a private message. Here, I'm going to send Vanessa a private message. So I go here and say, hmm. Uh, let's see, come on, come on. Vanessa, lunch today. I'm buying. Now, this is sent directly to Vanessa Sibley because she's got her name up here. And Vanessa's going to get that message. But, at the same time, because it's an alert, it goes out to everybody. Everybody should see that message. I sent that to you. You didn't get that one? You just got the one. See, it's kind of it's kind of cool because you got a built-in feature where you can text. Them. They they used to not let you do that in the alert mode. You could only do that in the chat or curated chat mode. So that's that's why I was wondering because when I sent you that private message, it should have gone out to everybody because it was an alert message. I wonder can I text back and you get it since it's an alert mode? Try it. And while we're doing this, this is where if you're watching, you know, the end of a movie, the credits would be rolling and, you know, we'd be getting ready to walk out because I know y'all are, you need to go down and get something to drink and head down to the main ballroom. And I'd like to thank you for taking your time coming today. I hope that, hope this has been beneficial. I hope that uh, you'll be able to use this. If you do have questions, uh, you can go to the tech blog and contact me there or you can... Well, I don't have it here. You can email me, craig.jackson at rcu.msstate.edu. Or you can. Okay, when I charge the text back, it says to deliver text to, and then they give the option A, B, or C. Okay, Nick, I did get your message. You did? I did get your message. You got to put that, Craig Jackson. It's got different, it's got commands. If you do need to call, you can call my Google Voice number at 662-205-6323. You can also text to that, that phone number. Uh, if you're not using Google Voice, it's a really cool thing um, that you can actually go in. I've got a personal website that um, I'm always getting people emailing me questions about different things or how do I call you to ask you this question. But because I've got Google Voice, I'm able to set up a phone number right here. And if, if you were to dial in that, uh, put your name and your phone number, it would call me at no charge to you. 
And right now I've got it set up on an answering, on an answering machine that says, you know, we can't come to the phone right now, leave your message and I'll call you back. But you're able to, they're able to call you. Let's see. Okay. Now, my phone will ring. Come on. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to answer this. Connecting your call. This is Google Voice. I just put the number in here. In just a second, I'll answer the phone with a pre-recorded message. Hello, thanks for calling Leftfield Lounge News. Can't take your call right now. We're getting ready for baseball season. But if you leave your name and phone number and a brief message, we will get back to you. Thanks. We look forward to seeing you out at Pooey Noble Field this year in the Leftfield Lounge. Okay. So that is Google Voice. It did not cost me a dime to call myself in Starkville, Mississippi. If you've got this on your website, you can put this widget right there and teachers can call in or parents can call in to a teacher or whomever. They don't have your phone number. You don't have my phone number. If you call this number right here, if I don't have this phone keyed to it, I don't get it. Now, go ahead. That's okay. A lot of the schools now are moving to Google Apps. Mm -hmm. Right. Sitting over the office to use the phone or whatever. Exactly. And um, it's kind of all in the same account. Whatever your school email account is, it's tied together. It's strictly voice over IP. But see, here's the one that I just made 953. And you've got voicemail here. It actually tries to. That it does a better job at translating if I don't have it on speakerphone held way out here. But you can see the messages, when they called, where they called from. You can send voice uh, text messages. Built in call screener. Yeah. The, uh, when you go to your calls, I can have different messages. Where are the messages? Uh, there's my different greetings that you can have. You can have it come in at a certain time when it automatically goes to do not disturb. You can forward it to as many phones as you want. So if I want, if I had a really big sense of humor, I would forward that left field lounge number to Kelly's phone number. So when those people call at three o'clock in the morning wanting to know when the next ball game is, I don't worry about it because I don't get the call. But of course then to do that you have to, you have to uh, actually accept it and they have they give you a number to call in and, and, and verify where you are. Your different widgets, you can create different widgets and have different numbers or different widgets on different websites that go to different answering messages. One could say I'm at baseball, one could say I'm at a conference, one can say I just really don't want to take your phone call. Just thought I'd tell you that. You can put that up there for whoever pushes that button. But Google, Google Voice, I can tell you that I have made in the past year and a half over a thousand calls, probably averaging 10 to 12 minutes per call. And I have not had a phone bill at all. So as a teacher, you can save money if you have to call if you have if you have references outside your your school district if you have somebody in Jackson you need to call to get some information your supervisor at the Department of Education or something like that you can actually use Google Voice in fact 